Before we begin, Oxygen Not Included is a simulation survival game by Clay, the same people that made Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together, you know, as they're most known for. It's a very involved game that requires a lot of player attention and effort to keep your colony alive. The game has you starting off with three space colonists called duplicants. These three dupes can have their own stats, as in what they can or cannot do, what they prefer to do, or what they're good at or bad at. They also have at least one debuff. For example, some might need to sleep in the light or some might fart frequently. In this video, you'll see that I go absolutely overboard. Now, I'm no pro at the game exactly, but I know somewhat what I'm doing. And having 200 entire living, breathing organisms within my grasp depends on me and me only to keep them alive is obviously not a good show of my skill at the game. So if you want to see possible successful colonies, check out my streams, where I might stream this game sometimes. Anyways, enjoy the video! To start this 200 dupe challenge, we first pick our three first duplicants. Hello, Bert, Devin, and Quinn. All three of you will not matter eventually, because I'll have 197 other problems to deal with. And so it begins. Here's where I use the developer cheats to spawn 200 duplicants for the first world. Yeah, you heard me right. The first world. This did not go too well. In fact, when I was done spawning all 200, it's almost as if they knew that their life was going to be absolute hell in this crowded wasteland in the middle of a meteorite. Listen to the screams of the damned. Ah, music to my ears. As quickly as these guys were born, I immediately put them to work. You know, so they can actually have some space. No one in this game likes overcrowding. Especially the duplicants. Stress is a big factor of this game. Just like Don't Starve. Clay loves their stress. If your dupes get stressed enough, they can freak out and lash out on others, piss themselves, vomit, etc. Or even worse, they can stop working. I decided to break the main floor so that they could land on something they could actually work with. Like, you know, plants and these bug-looking fuckers. And don't worry, I see those ones that are stranded and not breathing. I saved them swiftly by replacing the floor and putting a ladder so they could actually climb back up and start digging some more. Oddly enough, despite there being 200 of these guys, they don't really get things done that quick, despite also being on the quickest time setting. Sometimes I forget that they can randomly be assigned roles, like some of them here can't even dig or build, which are the two most important aspects of the game, which will make them useful for more agricultural things. And would you look at that, our oxygen sponges are finally suffocating. You see, like humans on Earth and everything else that's fucking alive on the planet, when we breathe oxygen, we emit carbon dioxide. And since there's 200 of these guys underground in a confined space, they are really wasting oxygen. And, little to my knowledge, they're actually spawning natural gas, which I didn't even know they did. I assume because it's such a tiny amount, it doesn't even show on the screen when you have three, four, or five dupes. With 200, it's more evident. Now here you can see I'm hastily putting down a bunch of beds and bathrooms so they don't piss and shit themselves everywhere and cause a shit tsunami. Because I cannot imagine 200 duplicants all pissing themselves at the same time. Here's where I make our first bit of technology using a battery, a manual generator, and a couple of these oxygen diffuser thingies. When you dump algae in here, this makes oxygen. And I'm setting the priority for these things onto 9, because I don't want all of them to ignore this. This is incredibly important, since about 50 of them are about to suffocate right now. And because they're all a bunch of oxygen-sucking shit fuckers. Here's why I said this is the first world. They're dropping immediately like flies. So, personally, I don't think it's possible that 200 could survive traditionally in the beginning of a world. It's just too crammed and too much. You could even see I get desperate and put a bunch of graves down. What's the use? I mean, there are 100 dupe challenges, and this is why I did 200. Because no one does 200. After looking at the CVS list of suffocation quotas, I thought that I might as well just end this world and start anew. So, welcome to the new world, Hassan, Gossman, and Marie. You three will not ma- oh, okay, I already made this joke, whatever, you get it. And here's what I meant by manually digging up some space. I just open up the world for them a bit, mining a little square for them, as a sort of starting ground, and for more oxygen. And room! I also keep the game pause while setting up their bathrooms, because I just know for a fact they're gonna surprise me by pissing all over the place and drowning in their own urine. And let the screams begin. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Ah, the beautiful sound of production. They're actually getting started on their oxygen and bathroom stuff first, luckily. Although these seven bathrooms will not serve 200 duplicates properly, it's a start. Plus, they're not expensive, only using up a couple sandstone, which is everywhere. This reminds me of Coachella. Now I'm building a ladder so they can actually access the water that's right below them. Oddly enough in this game, you don't have to worry about drinking anything, so this is more for... technical shit. Here I start wondering why they're screaming now out of all places, then I realize that a bunch of them just trapped themselves in this block. So I force them all to clear it, causing them to all look like a collective mass of wiggling, struggling arms, like an eldritch beast with Parkinson's. This is when I reached full zen, when everything was going just right, Everyone was doing their work, or cleaning, or standing. 
just what I want. Although later on it might be hard to actually find some that might be missing or stuck in places, so they might die randomly due to their own or their peers stupidity. Up next I go for the all important research machine. This is what helps the colony thrive and survive throughout the ever-changing world. And only one duplicate at a time can work on these. So hopefully one with a high research base stat can actually start working on shit for the future of the colony. If you look in the top left, it says that it's still cycle one. If you were starting a real game, it would probably be cycle three or four right now. I think this is because they scale it with how many dupes you have, which I didn't know. Fascinating. Anyways, you can see here I was about to consider using three hamster wheels, which ultimately would be useless, since only one is really needed to power one or two batteries. Plus, later in the game, if you're smart enough, everything will be pretty much automated. And no, I do not get this far with a colony of 200. Now you're gonna see me do my favorite thing ever in the game. Yellow alerts, which is just like a red alert, except not. A yellow alert is basically a milked down version of a red alert, but important enough where they should actually get up and go and do it. Next, despite still being on cycle one, I like to look at all of their stats so far. It seems that a lot of them have the super hard digging unlocked, which is good. Super hard digging and super duper hard digging is for harder materials that can't be dug by regular diggers. Honestly, explaining all this out loud makes me feel like Dr. Seuss. On this episode of something very important I forgot to do, food. The micro musher is one of the best starting food things for them to use. It shits out a delicious tasty slab of shit for them to eat, which is better than the regular stuff that drops on the ground. Will they ever use this? No, they will not. But listen to how happy they are, celebrating their little scientists discovering something new. Aw, they're applauding. Little do they know, their imminent death is in about 10 minutes. Also, to my surprise, I did not know that you could do something called scrolling up. Therefore, we have new land, new oxygen, new critters, and new plants for us to colonize instantly with the frivolous power of the human spirit. This is a duplicate W. As starvation sets in, I kind of just sit here and think about what I've done. This is 200 people, all laid to waste instantaneously from my decisions, spawned in from absolutely nothing, screaming in pain. Horribly. And now you can see as I'm attacking these light fuckers, which release a lot of radiation apparently, almost every single duplicate really wants to get out their rage on these tiny little innocent bugs that do nothing. These cruel beasts. All the little guys know how to do is love. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm the mastermind, I do everything. And once again, the first major suffocation quota comes in. Thus begins the end of an era. I also panic a bit here because I completely forgot to check the oxygen levels. You see, oxygen rises, obviously, and the carbon dioxide goes down, which makes it very inconvenient for our duplicates here. The best thing I know how to do is just go up and then keep going up until there's no more. I also saw that someone has to use the bathroom. They're probably not going to go down in the basement and use it. They're just going to piss all over the floor, knowing a duplicate, which will then cause everyone else to have to use the bathroom, and then comes the piss tsunami. But hey, there's no time to mope. It's night time. Finally, cycle two can begin after almost 20 minutes of gameplay. Cut for you guys, of course. And the reason I didn't start making beds earlier is because I completely fucking forgot that cycle two was even a thing. I thought we would all die by cycle one. Also, for some reason, they all love to huddle up like the crudes in one specific area and sleep in the same spot, causing a whirlpool of oxygen inhalation. And also because this game is this game, some duplicates like to sleep in the light, some duplicates cannot sleep around others, etc, etc. Good morning, hell planet. It's cycle two, and thus begins my reign of terror. I yellow alerted pretty much every single bed, so they can actually sleep at night, you know, in 45 minutes. I also want to get started this gigantic mess hall, which is where they can eat, and fitting 200 tables is impossible so a couple dead bodies are going to have to fly through. Oh, I'm starting to feel rumble. I think the piss Nami's coming. Here it comes! Wow. I've never seen that much urine in my entire life. And I'm a heavy pisser. So, me being the very good leader I am, I yellow alert every single stain on the ground for them to clean up. Because that matters, of course. Here's another moment of me just kind of sitting back and looking at what I've done. Once again, in disbelief that 200 people depend on me, and somehow they're all still alive. Two cycles in. Congratulations, all of you! Ooh, never mind. Ugh, that's the first death in this colony. You know what that means. Celebration! <clears throat> Just kidding. Loss and mourning. Haha. <laughs> Enough starvation, I thought. We have to make a farm. Now. Or else the whole colony will die. Just like that one loser. I mean duplicate. I tossed my hand in the most basic of farm designs. A big stack. And I thought to myself, hmm, this will go well. They're just gonna make it, and they're gonna have food, and hopefully some, or all, will survive. Boy was I wrong. This is the most tragedy I've ever seen in a video game related to farming. Well, time to reload my save. And I can only do this one time. Little did I know, this singular cracked block of sand will be the downfall of most of these guys' lives. And my goofy ass didn't even see it. I was so invested in research and the beds and the Bitcoin stock market that I didn't notice that most of these dupes were getting caught in the fucking sand. The sand that they could easily jump over. Or, you know, 
walk through. But in this game, sand is a complete solid. As hard as fucking rock. Anyways, it's time to work on that mess hall that I talked about earlier. And I don't mean a proper mess hall, I mean a big line of tables. So these motherfuckers can chow down on the nothing that they have at home. They ate pretty much everything in their base so far, so there's no point to this other than decor, I think. I don't think it dawned upon my young mind just yet that the farm is what's killing everyone, so I just let the production keep going. I have hundreds more stinkier things to worry about. Bah humbug. Jump cut about five minutes later, and I've started another pool with this untapped water source. You know, now tapped in. I also got them to get to work on the tables and the cleaning and all the extra non-farming stuff. No more fatalities, hopefully. Oh, never mind. I have no idea why, but this mysterious new death alerted me. And it showed me a really sad sight. Ruby is one of my favorite duplicate types. No, not because she shares the same name as my dog, but I just love her design. She's so cute. And seeing her like this is... It broke my heart. No air next to her dead friend in a hole that I didn't even know she fucking got herself in. At the very end of Cycle 2 as well. Eh, I probably have like four or five more rubies, but I don't know why this one got me. Rest easy, little one. Cycle 3. It's farming day, but not the type you think. We're planting this time. We're not building or digging or anything like that. We're just planting, okay? No more death. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Anyways, I start to place an order for a big wall around the place because I completely also forgot that temperature is an aspect. There's a lot of aspects in this game. Ooh, just our lucky day. The thingy has a thing for us. Every couple cycles, you get to choose a thing from the thingy. It has a name, I just forgot it. You get to choose either one of three duplicates or a critter or item of some sort. It's the end times and nothing really eventful happens, hence the skip. So, just a heads up, if you want me to do more of these types of videos and or this series of 200, 300, 400, 500 duplicates even, put a comment below. Tell me if you want me to do that or not. This was really fun and stressful. Also, my duplicates are trying to kill themselves now. And finally, at the very end, for the first time ever, despite the concern earlier, I checked the temperature. It's actually pretty well. I don't know why I assumed that all the duplicates would create a fucking heat bomb or some shit. But no, it's temperate and nice. Yep, I've come to it. This is the end. But what is this all for? They're all just gonna die while making it. It happens every time. Every time something's made, they die. Horribly. You hear that? Death. Death everywhere. It just cannot be quelled. I'd say it's time to put an end to this awful, awful experience. Yeah, that's the final straw. Oh well, I've tried. Thank you for waiting and being patient for my new content. I hope you all had an amazing new year. I really, really appreciate it yet again. This video was really fun to make, and I cannot wait to make more shit. So, yet again, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just comment below that you want to see them. Fuck. Just comment below that you want to see this more. Oh my god. Just comment below if you want to see more of this kind of fuck. Just comment below. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.